Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Two Valve GT. Today we're gonna we're gonna get into a little discussion about this uh, EPA garbage that's going around that involves you know all of us. Really, I mean. I mean, I've done a little bit of research on this whole, on this whole thing. And I mean, I haven't liked anything I've watched or seen or read about this and what it's going to mean for, uh, you know, for us going forward with building these cars and, you know, and as far as like the tuning aspect of it goes and not, not even just the tuning, just from what I've been seeing, it's going to it trickle down and in fact, just even buying parts, you know, anything that's like, I'm going to use it loosely like race oriented, you know, you know what I mean? But, um, and I, I seen a, watched the little video today, and I, I need to finish watching all of it. I probably shouldn't even bring it up because I haven't, I haven't watched all of it yet. But, um, from what I did watch on it, it, it kind of, the way I've interpreted it so far, that it kind of sounds like they're even going to go as far as like, sanctioning bodies in different forms of motorsports like NASCAR, NHRA, ARCA, I mean, IHRA, you know, you, I mean, you name it, it, it kind of was sounding like no one was going to be exempt from any of this. I mean, does that, like, spell the end of motorsports? I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I can't see, you know, just an, a halt coming to everything, but I mean, it sounds like a strict crackdown on making everything emissions friendly, which I mean, you know, like NASCAR, I know they, they take pretty lengthy measures in the making, you know, an 800 horsepower stock car as emission compliant as they can be, as they possibly can be. I mean, they run, you know, they do a lot of research in alternative fuels to make, you know, to develop a cleaner burning fuel for, I mean, Christ, they, they run E85 in them now. And I mean, so I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what any of this, really means yet just I know it, none of it's sounding really good I mean n n nothing that I've seen read or watched sounds good on this I mean event I, I fear eventually it, it's going to come it you know it, it's going to make its way down the hill I mean we're we're at the bottom we're at the bottom of the hill, and I think eventually it's going to roll. I mean, shit rolls downhill. So eventually it's going to it's gonna affect us. I mean, it's slowly, it's starting to already. I mean, there's a lot of, there's several manufacturers and even vendors that have stopped producing and selling like off-road H-pipes and stuff. I don't know if you guys have, if any of you like, shopping around lately for like a off-road H pipe or an off-road X pipe or anything. I mean, they're, they're scarce anymore. I mean, you figure, you know, five, six, you know, several years ago, you could go any place and buy, just say like an off-road H pipe for a Mustang. You go anywhere and buy it. Now it's you're lucky if you can find a place that has one, 
let alone if they do, will they sell it to you? I mean, it, it's getting bad. And then, I mean, I, and I don't even been hearing, like, I really haven't, like, researched it any. Probably should before I go on here, you know, talking about it. But, I mean, like, even, like, Dodge and Chrysler, you know, backing out of building V8 car, V8-powered cars and trucks. Uh, General Motors by what was it like 2035 everything in their lineup is going to be electric powered but I mean I don't it doesn't help you know it doesn't like help like this aftermarket thing that's happening right now when not saying that car manufacturers are, but if they're going to do stuff like this, they're kind of supporting the issue, you know. But, I mean, what what's going to happen to all these, like, little speed shops that, are, that float around? I mean, I live in a town of probably 1,500 people. We have a grocery store, a bank. You know, of course, we got Dollar General, you know. Those damn things are everywhere. And we got a performance speed shop. Mostly he sells just uh, stuff for uh, dirt track cars, like modifieds, late models, you know, stuff like that. But he can get anything and everything you can possibly imagine. He can, he can get. And the owner of the, of the place, he's a personal friend of mine. I've known him my whole entire life. I grew me and his kids went to school together. We all grew up together and I I buy stuff from there. And I mean, how's that going to affect him if all this goes down? I mean, places like LMR, you know, Summit, Jegs, uh, you know, the, the list is it's just, it's like never ending. The millions and millions of people that this is going to affect, you know, the people that's going to put out, put out of work. Because how are these companies going to hang on? You know, if they put a halt to anything that you know that says off road in front of it or race use only. I mean, how if manufacturers can't make it to where vendors can sell it how are these companies going to be able to to hang on to anything and and stay in business and, and it's just going to come on down the line from the big big companies to the little guy I mean I, I don't I don't fully understand everything that's going on. I know it's it's been, this has been in the works for years. It's, this, this ain't nothing that's brand new. This is just the first time it's actually been pushed as hard as it's being pushed right now. And I, I, I strongly believe that uh, a lot of it's political. I mean, you beg to differ. That's what the comment section's for, and I, I and I want to hear your guys' views and opinions on on all of this. You know, that's that's what uh, YouTube put a comment section up for is for you know for us to discuss these things. But you know, it, it's going to affect. All of us eventually. I mean, there, there's going to be like no getting around it. It may take years. It, I don't. It's nothing. I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I mean, we're talking years. I mean, some of some of the older guys out there, you know, that's in this industry, you know, 
may not affect them because they're, you know, just, they're, they're older, you know, <laughs> but, you know, the younger guys that are getting into it and it's going to affect them dramatically and it's going to affect a car hobby severely. I mean, the, the car hobby revolves around like the aftermarket. I mean, without aftermarket companies, um, we're everything's just cookie cutter, you know. We're all riding around in Toyota Priuses, you know. But look, like I said just in the comment section there, leave leave your opinions and views on this. You know, we'll. Uh, We'll talk about it, you know, we can all, like, educate each other on it, more or less. I mean, because I know I don't have all day to sit and read articles and watch videos and on, on this all day, every day. I mean, I, I don't have time for that. But, you know, we, we can all get behind each other and it educate each other on it but you know I, for the ones of you, you guys out there that have like speed shops that sell off-road parts I mean I, I guess that's what you want to say and do like tuning and stuff you know I, I wish you guys the best and hopefully you guys can hang on and you know, maybe not. Maybe none of this will come to reality. You know, maybe we can all just go back to building our cars and running them, breaking them, building them better. You know, I, I'm just going to end it here. You know, because this is this is a topic you know you could go on for days and days about. But I'm just, I'm just going to end it right here, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in the comments on it. See you all later.